2009 Mercedes GL450 oil filter housings leaking oil. I'm Brian Eslick from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through the steps of resealing that. We're going to get started by removing this front half of the uh, engine cover. So you're just going to lift up like that and pull straight out and set aside. To get started you're going to need a bucket underneath the vehicle to catch some coolant. We're going to drain a little bit of coolant out of this vehicle. So we need to remove this upper radiator hose and right here is a clip. So you're going to put a screwdriver in there and pull the clip out and then pull the hose out. So after popping the clip off, then you can take your same screwdriver and put it in between right here and give it a little twist. And at the same time, you can, or with the other hand, you can pull the hose and pop it off. Now you can pull the hose out like this. And slide your hose over to the side like this and tuck it away. So now that we got the hose off, we need to remove the serpentine belt. And to do that, the serpentine belt tensioner is right here. And right underneath the belt is a spot where you can put a 17 millimeter socket. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, uh, my serpentine belt tool here. I'm gonna show you this. I'll link this up in the description in case you guys need to pick something like this up. And I'll set this I'm up. Set the tool up. It's gonna look like this. And it's gonna have a uh, three inch drive uh, adapter on the end of it. And then you're gonna set it up where you, where you torque it counterclockwise. So if you flipped it over, it'll go clockwise. Flip it one way, it goes uh, counterclockwise. So you're gonna set it up like that. And you're going to install the tool onto the uh, socket down torque the tool over to the left and that'll release the tension from the belt and you can slip the belt off and i will put a link in the uh when we go to put this back on how, how the belt routes so, you, so for right now you can just slip now it off get the belt off and kind of just tuck out of your way we need to get the thermostat housing off and the first thing we need to do is right underneath it is a temp sensor it's going to be right here so we need to unplug this temp sensor and you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and then you're going to push this little white tab back a little bit. So you're going to put it in, in there and kind of just give it a twist. And that pops the little locking tab out like that. And then after it's popped out, then you can squeeze, push on it and then and pull the So after connector. getting it, the electrical connector unplugged, I'll just kind of tuck it out of the way. Actually, I pulled the wire out and just fished it out of the way. Next, I'm going to remove the... Uh, female Torx bolt which happens to be a, a, an E14 so it's going to look like this an E14 and we're going to uh, remove the idler pulley here so we're going to take this bolt out and remove, remove this pulley. After removing the pulley we're just going to set this aside. Now that the idler pulley is off we need to get a couple of torque bolts off, female torque bolts off. As you can see one right here underneath the air injection pump there's one right here and this pump is flexible so you can kind of maneuver it a little bit and it'll flex out your way and then you use a uh, a little extension with the socket with the well, female torques and you'll slide it in there like that and remove the remove that and then if you use a little mirror you can see it down here on the thermostat housing you, uh, the other bolt you'll remove that bolt and then the housing will come the off. The reason why we need to take it off is to gain access to this one bolt right here for the actual uh, oil filter housing. Once you get the two bolts out the thermostat housing will, will come out and you can go ahead and set that aside for now. So we need to get the, the belt tensioner off to get the two bolts there on the very bottom of the uh, oil filter housing. And uh, so there's going to be a torque bolt here and then underneath the actual pulley here is another torque bolt. And the best way to get to it is actually put your wrench back on it and torque it back over like this. And then you're going to have to get an extension from underneath and get to the one bolt. And once you get that bolt out, then you can release the tension like this and then remove the top bolt and then the whole tensioner will come so get, To get to the bolt for the um, tensioner on the bottom, you're gonna have to put your, your uh, setup on it again and torque it over. And as you can see, our, underneath the pulley, you can barely see it sticking out, but there's a little um, extension with the socket on it. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bottom bolt first. And then once I get the bottom bolt um, removed, then I'll release the tension like this. And then I'll remove the top bolt right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of uh, covered in mud. But uh, we'll remove the top bolt and then the tensioner will come off. All right, after getting the tensioner removed. Now the tensioner is removed, at the very bottom of the housing, there's going to be two bolts. In the middle of the housing, there's going to be three bolts. So two in the bottom, three in the middle, and the one on the top up here. And then once you get all those removed, then the, therm then the, um, the oil cooler housing will come off completely. 
So as you can see, there's two in the bottom, three in the middle, and one in the top. And once you get all those bolts removed, the whole housing will come completely out. Now what we're gonna do is clean up the engine block here. So we'll we'll clean up the surface right here where the where the uh, bracket mounts. So we'll clean this all off. We'll use rags, uh, parts cleaner. We'll use uh, maybe a little razor blade and clean everything up. After the engine block is uh, cleaned up, then we're going to remove the uh, the torque screws on the cooler here itself and remove the cooler from the uh, from the housing. And we're going to change the seal that goes in behind here too. And then we're going to clean all this up. So after unbolting the cooler from the housing. I went ahead and picked out all the old O-rings out of here. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the oil filter and I'll spin that out and then I'm going to clean up the whole housing in my parts washer. Okay after getting it all cleaned up afterwards you're going to install the new seal in here and I wanted to show you the part numbers. I will be linking this up uh, in the description of the video also. So you're going to uh, put your new seal on then you'll put your, your housing back on and you're going to tighten the bolts in a kind of a crisscross pattern. So you're going to go one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And you're going to um, tighten them all down to 14 pounds. After oil coolers, remount it back to the housing. And then you're going to uh, install the, the O-ring for the uh, actual oil filter housing itself. And then here's the part numbers. And once again, I will be linking these up in the description of the video. That way if you need to get them, you just click on the link. Now that the engine block is cleaned up, the housing is cleaned up and I got my new gasket installed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it inside the block and I'm going to torque it down in a crisscross pattern. So I'm, torquing, I'm starting the middle. So I'll go one here, one here, and then I'll work my way down to the bottom and then I'll do the top bolt last and I'll torque them all down at 15 foot. So when I took the bolt out, I kind of just set them up here on top of the air cleaner or computer here and I kind of set them in the way that they went because some of them are longer than the others. So, so you want to keep track of that when you take these bolts apart. Now that the housing is remounted to the block, I'm going to go ahead and change out my O-ring and fi oil filter and go ahead and reinstall that and tighten that down. So now I'm about to put the tensioner back in the car. And what I did was I clamped it in the vise and I torqued it over with my, uh, with my tool here. And then there's a little slot that has a hole in it and a little ear right here it catches. So once you torque it in, you put a, I put, all I do is put a punch in there like this and that holds it in place. Now I have access to the uh, to the bolts so I'm gonna put it in there and then to get the pin out you just put your your ratchet back on it and torque it over to the left a little bit and pull the pin out and then that'll release the tension on the uh, tensioner. So when I went to go put it in the my little out um, punch was too long it was hitting the fan bracket so I would have just switched just switched it back over to a small little bolt like this that went through and you'll probably have one something like this laying around. So now you can go ahead and put the tensioner back in and bolt it up. After that you're gonna change out the gasket and um, a lot of times on these uh, thermostats, if you see the little shiny spot like that, that indicates that this thermostat is dragging. So I recommend that you uh, go ahead and replace the thermostat. So, I'm, so this is the new thermostat for the uh, vehicle. I will leave a link for the, uh, for the parts in the, in the description of the video. That way if you need to pick it up. And this is a, a direct factory replacement. So you can go ahead and change out the gasket and install your new uh, thermostat. Start the top bolt on the uh, thermostat housing here. I just kind of got my fingers like this underneath like that and I was able to slowly start it. Because if you try to use an extension or anything like that, it'll be a kind of an angle and it'll be really easy to cock it and strip and uh, cross thread it. So I recommend you, you start the bolt kind of like this from the side. And then once you get it going, then you can put your, your extension and your socket on there and tighten it up. So after getting the thermostat housing bolted back up, you're going to take the electrical connector for the, the temp sensor on it. You want to make sure you route it, stuff it behind the, uh, behind the housing like that and plug it back in. Okay, after installing the thermostat housing and bolting it down, plugging the sensor back in, we need to install the idler pulley for the drive belt. And I recommend that you put a little bit of uh, blue thread locker or Loctite on the threads of the uh, of the bolt. It's a little glue to help prevent the bolt from vibrating loose and coming back off. So I tried looking up the torque spec for this, and I couldn't I couldn't locate a torque spec for this either pulley bolt. So you're going to put it on and tighten it down good and snug, and then uh, make sure you have that blue Loctite on there, and you should be in good shape. I'll leave a link for this in the description of the video also. 
That way, in case you need to pick it up, you can get that. Now we're going to reroute the drive belt. And I printed out a diagram here for you, and this is how the, the belt routes. So go ahead and route it on your on all the pulleys like this, as, as you see on the diagram. And then uh, right here on the... Uh, Right here on the uh, on the pulley, we'll torque it over with our uh, serpentine belt tool and remove that bolt that we put installed in there, and that'll and then release the tension, and that'll and I'll tighten up. The After belt. reinstalling the belt and releasing the tensioner on the tensioner, removing that little bolt out of it that we put in, now we're gonna uh, plug our hose upper hose back in. So if yours, you should have had a little uh, a little catch right here that holds the hose. So go ahead and reinstall that on the on the on the housing here. My new thermostat already came with the clip already pre-installed. If yours didn't, you need to reinstall your clip. If you're or if you reused your thermostat for reinstall the clip, and then you're just going to take the hose and push it on until you hear it click, and then you're going to give it a pull and make sure that it's not going to pop back off. Now that the hose is back on. We're going to go ahead and top off the oil. If you uh, maybe I would recommend you go ahead and just change the oil. So go ahead and drain it out and, and fill up the oil. And also then we're going to fill it up with uh, Mercedes-Benz approved coolant. And you're going to fill up the coolant all the way until you get to the top of this little little slash mark right here in the bottle. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top of the neck because this is a, called an expansion tank. So if you fill it up too much and then it, uh, the coolant will expand and it will put pressure in this bottom pocket. So fill it up to here. After you fill up the bottle you can go ahead and reinstall your uh, upper cover. So the little hooks at the end of the cover right here are just going to hook into the into the little holes here and here so you'll stab those like that and then once you get them stabbed like that then you just push the cover straight down and it'll pop into place now you're going to run the vehicle and you're going to feel this upper hose until the thermostat opens up and this hose will get warm and once this hose goes warm recheck your coolant level after your uh, you may have to adjust your coolant level and uh once you're satisfied that it's full and then the thermostat is open, um, you also may want to see, listen for the cooling fans to run. And you want to do this all with the heater on, on the low on the low setting, and you want to feel warm air coming out of the dash also. And once you get all that done, that'll complete the oil filter housing and thermostat replacement on a 2009 Mercedes GL450. I'll leave links in the description for all the tools and parts that I use in this video. I'm Brian Essett from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. I encourage you to subscribe. I invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again.